Okay, so now that we've talked about the different categories, um, because so many of the joints in our bodies are freely movable, um, they are synovial joints, and therefore uh, we really have to understand the structure of synovial joints in depth. Um, the way that um, it's been divided up for you is that, one, to think about the structures that are always at the joint, and then the other are accessory to structure, accessory structures. These structures may or may not be at a joint. They don't always have to be there, okay? And it's going to depend on what that specific joint is doing as to whether or not those accessory structures are there. So, for example, my fingers, all right, they are going to be doing very different things than my knees. They're going to be subjected to different sorts of stress, different sorts of weight loads, um, all of those sorts of things. And so the accessory structures at those two joints are going to be very different so that each joint can accomplish its purpose. So uh, these are a list right here, um, and the words are bolded for you of the structures that are always present at synovial joints. And then down here are the structures that are sometimes present at these joints. And so let me go through those um, with you, okay? So this is showing here uh, just the base structure. Any synovial joint you see will have these features to it, okay? So one, it's going to have articular cartilage. Um, remember the word articular means joint, so it's cartilage at the joint. Um, this is always going to be uh, where those two joints would meet up, okay? So basically it's a little bit of cartilage between the bones, and that's going to serve to reduce friction, is what that's going to do. Um, it is always Highland cartilage, um, so that is the type. But keep in mind, this is not a synchondrosis because it's not a bridge. Notice that there's a gap between this cartilage, okay? So that's what makes it synovial. There's a gap, not a bridge, okay? Now, one thing you're also going to notice is on the outside is going to be this dense fibrous membrane, okay? And so this is going to be the joint capsule, all right? And here, um, well, at first it's going to be lined by a synovial membrane, okay? And the synovial membrane is going to be made of areolar connective tissue and also an incomplete epithelium, and it secretes synovial fluid. Now, what this does, because these two bones that are meeting up do not actually touch each other, there is a cavity, and it's filled with synovial fluid. Now, the synovial fluid is a little bit like molasses. It's thick. And so what that does is it serves as, say, pressure was put down in this direction, and this joint or this bone might be pushed toward this one. Well, it serves as a little bit of cushion, so your joints aren't going to be running into each other, but there's some cushion and some give, okay, in between them. And so uh, the membrane forms the boundaries of the cavity, this joint capsule and the synovial membrane. The synovial membrane sec secretes fluid into the cavity, and that serves as a cushion in between these two bones, okay? Now, synovial fluid is also going to do something else uh, as well as cushion, it lubricates, and it also has nutrients in it. Now, if you remember cartilage, there's living cells inside of it, you have chondrocytes. There's no blood supply to cartilage. And so it turns out that the nutrients in the synovial fluid are gonna be pushed up into the cartilage and that is how the chondrocytes get their nutrients. Now, it turns out as you move, that kind of helps push those nutrients into that cartilage. 
And so regular movement of your joints is actually important for the health of the joints because that helps to get those nutrients to those cells. Okay, so if we're filling out our notes packets and what we've just talked about here, okay, so for each of these structures, so these are uh, different structures at synovial joints, and so articular cartilage, okay, it lines the um, articulating surfaces, the bones, okay. The big function of this structure is to reduce friction. And is the structure found at every synovial joint? Yes, you bet. So therefore, is it an accessory? No, it's not, because if it's found at every joint, it is not accessory. Okay, synovial fluid. Where is it located? It is in the synovial cavity. Okay, what is its function? It is going to lubricate surfaces, cushion bones, uh, from impact, and it also provides nutrients to cells nearby. Is it found at every synovial joint? You bet. So therefore, is an accessory structure? No. Okay. The Soviet synovial membrane, it's going to line the inside of the synovial cavity. It consists of areolar tissue and an incomplete epithelium. All right, and it is going to uh, secrete synovial fluid. That is its job. If synovial fluid is always at every synovial joint, then what do you think about the synovial membrane since it makes that fluid? Well, it has to be there. There has to be something there to make it. And since it's always there, not accessory. Okay, joint capsule. This is going to be dense connective tissue. And it forms a strong boundary for the cavity, for the synovial cavity. That's what makes that boundary. Okay. And so again, it adds strength to the cavity boundary. And by doing that, it's going to keep all of that synovial fluid within the cavity, keep it where we need that synovial fluid. We don't want that synovial fluid leaking out just anywhere. We want it at that joint. And again, yes, so I'll let you fill that in right there. Now the rest of these structures down here, these are all going to be accessory structures. So if they're accessory, are they found at every joint? No. So therefore, are they accessory? Yes. Okay. And so I'll let you fill that out for the rest of these that we're going to talk about. They're all accessory structures. So let's look at an image. Okay. Now this here is showing the knee joint but it is showing it um, in a sagittal cut. So remember, a sagittal cut goes along like this, okay? It's not a mid-sagittal, so it's not at the midline, but it is right down the middle of the knee, okay? So this here is your kneecap. This is the back of your knee. Now, to help you get oriented to this image, in black here is going to be the cavity, okay? So the cavity goes all the way up there and goes all the way across here. Um, and of course, we're looking at the femur, the tibia, and the patella. The fibula um, is not at the knee joint, okay? All right. So we're going to see the things that we always see. We see our synovial membrane, we see our joint capsule, we see our joint cavity, and lining the bones here, you see the articular cartilage. Okay, so those are all going to be things that we normally see at these structures. But um, let's actually go through and look at some of the accessory structures. And we picked the knee because the knee has almost every accessory structure. 
it's subject to so much impact um, and is responsible, that joint has to be stable to uh, hold up the weight of the body throughout the lifetime of somebody. And so this joint uh, has a lot of these accessory structures. Now, a couple of things. Uh, one, we're going to have bursa. Okay. And so bursa are going to be little sacs filled with synovial fluid. Okay. And these bursa are there. Um, and you can see here's a ligament running from the patella down to the tibia. And on either side, you've got bursa. So it serves really to reduce friction as this knee bends and this ligament moves. Uh, we've got something that kind of reduces friction on either side. Um, and it can also serve as a shock absorber. Uh, another thing we're going to have is a fat pad made of adipose tissue, obviously. Um, this is uh, going to usually be outside of the joint cavity, okay? And I should say bursa are outside of the joint cavity, okay? So you don't see it inside here. Fat pad outside, and it's going to be a couple of things. One, it's going to be uh, cushioning. But another thing is it helps restrict movement. If you've got fat up in there pressing on the ligament, pressing on that bone. It means that that bone can't wobble around as much. That ligament can't move around as much because it's got fat packing it in on either side. Okay, And so that's actually really important for the normal health of the joint to have a certain level of fat there uh, to restrict that movement. The next thing we have is we have what's called a meniscus. These are actually generally found inside the joint cavity. So this is meniscus up here, and this is a meniscus right back here. So you can see it's actually in the joint cavity, and it's between these two bones. A meniscus is made up of fibrocartilage, and so it's going to do a few different things. Um, it's because it's fibrocartilage, it's going to resist compression, so it serves as a shock absorber. And then something else that's really, really important is that it's going to restrict movement. Okay, so for example, um, here is going to be the knee, okay, and if you look at the surfaces of the patella and the femur, um, they could really wobble off of each other. Um, I think this probably shows it better, okay? And so these surfaces don't completely match, okay? So what you end up having is you have this pad of fibrocartilage that comes up and adds a little bit of extra on the sides, a little bit of extra on the backs between those two joints. And so that's going to keep these joints from, these bones from being able to uh, move quite as much uh, relative to each other because you have this little lip of fibrocartilage that prevents that from happening. Okay. Now, the next thing we have is we have extracapsular uh, ligaments. And, uh, well, actually, uh, first, what I want to talk about on your notes packets is to go down here and talk about intrinsic ligaments and extrinsic ligaments. Intri intrinsic ligaments are just local thickenings of the joint capsule. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just, if you look for that joint capsule, it would just be a location where it is a little bit thicker. And so it's so thick, it's no longer called a capsule, it's called an intrinsic ligament. Now, extrinsic ligaments, those are going to be ligaments outside, um, or that are not part of the joint capsule. Okay, so extrinsic ligaments are not a part of the joint capsule. And there's two types. Uh, 
there's going to be extracapsular and intracapsular ligaments. So if we go here again, we can have intrinsic ligaments and extrinsic ligaments and extrinsic ligaments have two flavors. One is an extracapsular, which means that it's outside of the capsule, or intracapsular, which means it's inside the joint capsule. Okay, and again, intrinsic ligaments are just a lo uh, local uh, thickening of the joint capsule. Okay, so this is how they're classified. So if we go back to this picture of the knee, uh, this in here it's inside the joint cavity and so it is a intracapsular ligament. Here, this ligament is outside the joint cavity, so this is an extra capsular ligament. Okay, and if we're looking at it on the model of the knee, okay, so here's a knee model, we can see the joint cavity is actually going to be deep inside here where these two bones meet one another. So here's a ligament, here's a ligament. These are going to be um, outside the joint capsule. But if we open this up, we're actually going to see, okay, right in here, here's also a ligament, okay? And that's inside the joint cavity. And so it would be an intracapsular ligament. Okay, and so these are all the structures that are accessory structures. I would encourage you to re-listen um, to what we just talked about if you need to, and go back through and fill up your notes based on what we just talked about. Um, I do want to point out that there's this payoff. The more you can move a joint, the less stable it is. Okay. And that's just a trade-off that, over time, um, our joints have evolved. So, for example, our shoulders, incredibly movable, okay? But they are the least stable joint in the body, okay? And then the opposite is going to be true as well. Um, things that provide stability to a joint is, one, the joint capsule and all ligaments. They've got collagen fibers. Those are very strong fibers. Okay, another is going to be the shape of the articulating surfaces. So those things interlock. Um, a great example is going to be the elbow. So we look here at the humerus, okay, and the ulna, all right, we're going to notice that these just interlock perfectly. And so those articulating surfaces that match perfectly provide stability. This thing can't overextend because of how this process hits the fossa, okay? And it's generally going to rotate right along this location because, if you notice, this grooved part right here perfectly matches um, the grooved part of the trochlea perfectly matches this trochlear notch right here. Okay. Again, uh, other bones, muscles, or fat pads near the joint. So um, we already talked about the fat pad in the knee. Um, the patella is something that can help provide stability also at the knee. Um, muscles can be particularly important. We'll learn for the shoulder. There's a whole bunch of muscles 
packed around this joint so that even though it has a large range of motion, those muscles can provide stability and prevent it from hopefully popping out. Okay. And then again, we have uh, tension in the tendons that can also provide stability. So I encourage you to go through. You've got some labeling activities and some other things to help you learn uh, these uh, structures that are always found at a synovial joint and also accessory structure.